For the Record is brought to you by Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. Cayman Pharmacy Group, with a location in West Bay and professional pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. Seaboard Marine, with over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling 949-4977 or visit seaboardmarine.com for competitive rates. FIS MoneyGram, the safest and most convenient way to send money worldwide. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. Coca-Cola, available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga distributors. Accept no substitutes. Taste the feeling with Coca-Cola. Brand Source Home Gallery, inspiring luxury. And Fidelity Bank. Fidelity, we're good for you. For the record, also brought to you by Ropers Enterprises. 122 Industrial Way, products and services for better public health. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Coming to you live from Radio K9 Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Hear, Hear from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. If you are waking, waking up in the Cayman Islands this morning, or if you have woken up in the Cayman Islands this morning, you are in the best place in the world, the best place on this planet called Earth, the Cayman Islands. So if you're a pedestrian, cyclist, operating any type of motorized vehicle on the roads of the Cayman Islands, not only are you in the best place in the world, but the roads in the best place in the world, are wet this morning as well. Traffic starting to back up already. So remember that while you're traversing the roads of the Cayman Islands, you have to adjust your activity to suit the road conditions. So even if you're a pedestrian, you're walking, you have to be careful, you don't want to slip down, but you also need to realize that the other vehicles on the road, that their visibility is likely to be reduced as well, especially if the rain is coming down. So it may be a little bit more difficult for them to see you uh, as well. So please walk carefully on the roads. If you're cycling, cycle carefully. If you have any sort of reflective clothing, wear those. If you have any uh, flashing lights, like a flashing red light, uh, that you can clip onto your bicycle so that you're more visible on the roads, please do that as well. And if you're driving, you're operating any type of motorized vehicle on the roads of the Cayman Islands, please be extra attentive as well. Also bear in mind that because of the road conditions, you have to increase the distance between you and the other cars because the, your ability to stop is um, uh, curtailed by the wet roads as well. So in essence, what I'm saying is everybody, please be careful out there uh, this morning. Extra careful. You need to be careful all the time. But this morning, please be extra careful. Lots of uh, traffic will be on the roads and uh, most of the roads are wet as well. So folks, I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy and wet roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work wherever that may be. As you know, For the Record is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Orit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 10 a.m. During that period, our phone lines are open. The radio voice of Silver Fox, Mr. Paula Carl, is there to take your calls 
You can call us on our toll-free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number, 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. Email us at for the record one word, for the record, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. WhatsApp us, 925-3261, where we encourage you to send us a text message or leave us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio K-Man live stream. For those of you who are celebrating a birthday today, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Um... Okay, we, we have two uh, persons that are celebrating a birthday today that we know about. Dwayne Ebanks and Donovan Ebanks. They're celebrating a birthday today. Uh, which one? Uh, Dwayne or Don- Donovan? Donovan's birthday was yesterday. Uh, Dwayne Ebanks today. Uh, belated happy birthday to my better half also, um, Grace Webb. She celebrated a birthday uh, yesterday. Also, I've also uh, we've also received an email that Miss uh, Etna Dilbert, Miss Etna Dilbert of West Bay, that she turns ninety six years of age today as well. So, Miss uh, Etna, want to wish you a happy birthday as well, and uh, you celebrate those ninety six years that you have been on this lovely earth and uh, we want to wish you many many uh, more birthdays as long as the Lord has will for you to be on this earth uh, as well. Uh, Today being Friday and uh, we promised you that we would continue these conversations as long as we had the opportunity to do so and we continue to have it the opportunity to talk about the whole process of the right to self-determination the decolonization process the position that the cayman islands find ourselves in we'll talk a little bit about 50 years uh, almost 50 years ago the 8th of december of this year would be uh 50 years since uh, a letter was written to the United Nations by uh, a young Caymanian who was studying in Canada and uh, certainly had uh, their concerns, uh, wrote on behalf of three Caymanians studying in Canada and bringing to the attention of the United Nations the um, condition in relation to, in particular, scholarships in the Cayman Islands and uh, scholarships for higher education as well. And this morning, we will be able to hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth because it is my pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning, none other than Dr. Steve McField. And we have um, documents to share with you, some that I am sure will uh, evoke uh, memories to uh, Dr. Matt Field, fifty, almost fifty years ago. So, without any further ado, Doc, good morning, sir. Welcome back to For the Record. Good morning to you, Mister For the Record, and good morning to all your people, uh, your listeners in For the Mister Record Land, and um, For the Record Land, and those in the diaspora. And um, good morning to everyone else who may be tuning in to you wherever they may be. Good morning, and I. Thank you for inviting me back on your program this morning. Okay, so, Doc, when you came this morning, well, we, we spoke on the phone, but I had a folder, um, you know, ready for you um, as well this morning, and I could see when you started to flip through that, the, smile, the smiles on your face, because it, it obviously brought back memories. So what I'm going to share with our audience, um, if we look at the, uh, one of the first documents on there, it's um, the, the code for it um, in the United Nations uh, site is A slash AC period 109 slash 372, 25th of June, 1971. Special Committee of, on the Situation with Regards to the Implementation of the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples. Uh, Question of Cayman Islands. Note by the chairman. Uh, 
Point number one, at its 789th meeting on the 7th of April 1971, the Special Committee on the Situation with Regards to the Implementation of the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples by adopting the 156th Report of the Subcommittee on Petitions A slash AC 109 slash L693 and uh, Correspondence 1 decided to transmit the text of a communications con uh, communication concerning the Cayman Islands to the administering power concern for its comments or observations. In accordance with the above mentioned uh, decision of the special committee, the chairman, in a letter dated the 20th of April 1971, transmitted to the permanent representative of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland uh, to the United Nations for the attention of his government, a copy of the communication requesting any comments or, or observations which his government might wish to make concerning its contents. In a note dated the 25th of June, 1971, the acting permanent representative of the United Kingdom transmitted to the chairman the observations of his government as requested. The text of the note uh, is re uh, reproduced bef uh, below. The acting permanent representative of the United Nations of Great Britain and Northern Ireland to the United Nations presents his compliments uh, to the chairman of the special committee of 24 and has the honor to enclose herewith with reference to Dr. Uh, Nava Carillo's letter of the 20th of April 1971, a copy of the conversations of the United Kingdom government on the communications circulated as A slash AC 109 petition 11. Six one. Um, observations of the United Kingdom government in the petition from Mr. A. S. Macfield concerning the Cayman Islands. Um, so I'm going to stop there for a minute because we also have a copy doc of the letter, the original letter yes. that you sent. Um, yes. Now, I know the print and some of that is uh, uh, pretty faint, but yes. uh, uh, are you able yes, to read that? Well, I'm going to have you read that. What we're going to do is we're going to take an early early commercial break so we don't yes. have to um, uh, interrupt you. And I want to read your own words that you wrote to the United Nations in on the 8th of December, 1970. Folks, don't change that dial. You want to hear this? So please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the Historical Vignette Series. Brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. The Cayman Islands. He hath founded it upon the seas. The 1700s proved to be a very important century to the Cayman Islands. Permanent settlement of Grand Cayman began with a few families, most notably the Bodens. Between 1734 and 1742, five land grants in Grand Cayman were made by the governor of Jamaica. At this time, mahogany and logwood were exported to Jamaica. In 1780, William Eden, a mariner and early English settler, established a cotton and mahogany plantation in Savannah's Pedro Bluff and built St. James, now known as Pedro St. James Castle, a remarkable building for that period and the only house on Grand Cayman to survive a devastating hurricane of 1784. In 1794, the wreck of the Ten Sails occurred and Cayman's most popular legend of how the island became tax-free was born. 
1798, the governor of Jamaica appointed the first magistrate in Cayman. Radio Cayman's Historical Vignettes was brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. The 25th Rotary Central Music Extravaganza is here. Saturday, November 28th is the date. You, yes, you, look in that mirror. You can be the winner. $40,000 is waiting for you. Second prize, $4,000, six $1,000 prizes and more. Tickets on sale soon for only $25. Keep your ears open. Keep your wallets ready because you, yes, you can be that winner. The Rotary Central Music Extravaganza 2020. Proceeds fund over 70 Rotary Central projects throughout the Cayman Islands. Rotary Central Cayman Islands is not-for-profit number 232. Rotary opens opportunity. Stronger. Wider. Higher. Lighter. The all-new Ford Ranger Raptor. Powerfully built with a 2.0 diesel Panther engine and 210 horsepower. Modern with leather interior and 8-inch touchscreen. Sync 3 technology and power features. Tough. Built to handle the off-road with four-wheel drive, terrain modes, and a 10-speed automatic transmission. Coming early October to Vamped Motors, Walker's Road. To find out more and to test drive the bold new Ford Ranger Raptor, visit Vamped Motors, Walker's Road or call 949-8288. It was a day that changed my life. No words can describe the feelings of seeing my baby boy sick for the first time. The overwhelming feeling of fear to be responsible for his health and happiness became my priority. So I did what any nurturing mother would do when their baby is sick. I took him to get some of the best medicine possible. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care, so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. We all know there's nothing more refreshing than the taste of an ice-cold Coca-Cola straight from the cooler. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Whether we're celebrating a birthday, promotion, or just a great meal, make each moment a Coca-Cola moment. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga Distributors. Make sure you ask for the unforgettable flavor of a classic Coca-Cola. It's the Tempur-Pedic and Sealy Summer of Sleep Mattress Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Temper Adapt Hybrid Queen Mattress, now just $19.99. Save $500 on all Temper Breeze mattresses. Save $200 on all Sealy Hybrid mattresses. Check out Brand Source Home Gallery's wide selection of Tempur-Pedic and Sealy mattresses and enjoy savings during the Summer of Sleep Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Visit us at 209 Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Call 623-5000 for more information. Fidelity Bank would like to thank all essential workers. We salute your efforts and thank you for the sacrifices you've made to keep us all safe. During these challenging times we're facing, our top priority is the health and safety of the communities we serve. And while it's true that things are changing rapidly every day, one thing that will never change is our commitment to giving you the best in sound financial solutions to help you during and after the coronavirus pandemic. At Fidelity Bank, our focus will always be you. Fidelity, we're good for you. System one loaded. 1 800 534 8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1 800 534 8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We're going to share with you uh, uh, correspondence that Dr. Steve McField uh, sent to uh, the subcommittee in the U. United Nations in 19, the 8th of December, 1970. Uh, this subcommittee on, uh, on petitions and uh, at their meeting, then they presented it on the 6th of April. Now, before, before I go over to you, Dr. Markfield, I just want to point out that 
the United Nations preserved basically everything. We know now that your address in Canada at that point in time was 4518 uh, West. West 13th mm -hmm. Avenue, mm -hmm. Vancouver, 8 British Columbia, Canada. That's right. They preserved the, the very envelope uh, is on their website, uh, with, uh, the stamps and everything on it, even the reverse side, yes. you know, of, of, of the envelope and everything. Uh, so it is, it is all there. So Dr. McField wrote to them. They, in turn, passed on the correspondence to the UK representative in the United Nations to get their response, and uh, things followed from there. So Dr. Mark Field is going to share now with you the letter that he wrote on the 8th of December, 1970. Doc. Yeah, it was Vancouver, British Columbia, 8th of December, 1970. The Secretary, the Subcommittee um, 3, United Nations Special Committee, United Nations New York, dear sir, on behalf of Cayman Islands Nationals in Canada, please accept these or a pleas for your assistance. We have decided to plead directly to you because we find that in the past our pleas went unheard um, by those who control our beloved country. We have read your recent resolutions in which you strongly condemn our position of sub subordination. We welcome this humanitarian gesture. We praise you for declaring your, dish, your wishes that we should be free. But your resolutions, if they are not enforced, will mean the continuation of the present system of author, uh, authoritarian government. Our present system of no division of powers and therefore no appeal for us as citizens from, our authority, from one authority to the other renders your resolutions as mere ideals. Our government has refused to concede to such changes. The Cayman Islands government has stated, and I quote, The administrator, as the Queen's representative, is head of the government, which has an executive arm, a legislative body, and a civil service. Whether we like it or not, the executive council or cabinet is entrusted with the responsibility of making decisions, and it must govern. The alternative is anarchy or mob rule, neither of which are relevant to our uh, democratic and Christian way of life and principles, unquote. Sir, this is the answer that our government has offered to our resolutions, to your resolutions. In view of these facts, and according to your urges that in the forthcoming elections, the people of that territory be given an opportunity to express their views regarding their future, we ask for your assistance in these matters. Sir, we do want to govern ourselves. We do want our assistance, your assistance in seeking that this is done in the democratic method. For these reasons, I, as a student here at the University of British Columbia, ask you to assist us in helping to inform our people of their rights. Because of our government's opposition to us pursuing a degree in higher education, we are without funds. We would have come to you before you to plead our cause, but we are financially unable to do so. We would be able, with your help, to explain to our people that your resolu what your resolution means. Through our understanding of your democratic process, we would like to be able to give God seminars to those who do not understand as we do. With film and the necessary education on the workings and application of representative government, we could be more assured that our people are made aware of their pending responsibilities. Sir, we cannot wait for hope, nor hope for the present government system of the Cayman Islands to do these things. We have no assurance now or in the near future that your resolutions will be upheld. Your committee is our only immediate assurance. We would also, if you should request, put ourselves at your disposal. If you should carry out your intentions to enter that territory, we would gladly assist you in your efforts. In, those, in these efforts, in this time of need, in the hour of our freedom, we ask you, to please hear our pleas for assistance. Assist us that we may be able to take our place among the free, that you may greet, greet us as, uh, as greet us not as colonials, 
not as subjects, but as citizens of the Cayman Islands and of the world, which you, your committee represents. Yours truly will be awaiting. Yours truly will be awaited with anticipation. Your reply will be awaited with anticipation. Yours respectfully, signed Alan Steve McField, student University of British Columbia for a student and, and nationals Cayman Independence Committee. Okay. Okay. Now. So and and they did send you a, a response as well, advising you that uh, your correspondence had been received and it would be um, uh, transmitted. Uh, I don't know if we have if if we can find that. I, I'll look for that. But in the meantime, what I would like you to do, Doctor Steve McField, is to uh, this was written on behalf of uh, you. People of the Cayman Islands as well, but in particular, two additional students who were in Canada studying that's, with you. That's tell, right. tell us what, hap what, what happened there. Well, um, when, when the United Nations contacted them um, to see if they were represented me, if, if, they, uh, if they were part of um, were part, they refused so, to say that they were part of, the, of, of my letter. They refused to sign the letter. And, mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, the United Kingdom... Um, representative said that in his observations that you will now read. Mm -hmm. we'll, it says that. But we'll probably read that so, after. So, after. Uh, so mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know why I had such a hard time when I came back to this country. Mm -hmm. People said to me, like, what, 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 did, what did he do? I mean, he just came back here. But I was persona non grata for many years mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to come back here. Mm -hmm. I was told that I was not welcome back here mm -hmm. by the administering country and by the local government. Jack Rose and, mm -hmm. and, and the people who were running the country at the time. And um, because I had written this letter to the United Nations and, and, it was a, an, and they turned it into a petition from an individual and, it's, and, and circulated it to the, um, all the people on the subcommittee, yep. all the people in uh -oh. the United Nations, okay. and, and especially to the United Kingdom, the representative. Right. So it sort of like embarrassed them. They said you know, embarrassed, them, on the spot, but, embarrassed you know. them, put them on the spot of, mm -hmm. of what I had said. And then when the United Kingdom contacted the other people in Canada, the other two people in Canada, they refused to, 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 to concur with me and to mm -hmm. sign to, to let the letter to give it more strength. Mm -hmm. And but, you will see that when you read what the United Kingdom people said right. and their reply to, to the to, to the to the to the committee to the committee of three. But despite despite that they still took up your cause. Yes, they you know. still took up yes. my cause, yes. So here's the letter that was written uh, uh, to you on the twenty first of December nineteen seventy. Um dear sir, your letter of eighth of December has been referred uh, to this section and that section would be um, the uh, Department of Trusteeship and Non-Self-Governing uh, Territories. Uh, the um, chief, and the letter came from the chief of petitions in that section, and his name was F.D. Popov. I would imagine it probably Russian. So it reads, your letter of the 8th of December has been referred to this section. The special committee on the situation with regard to the implementation of the Declaration of the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples has established a subcommittee on petitions to deal with communications such as yours. Having just completed its work for the current year, the special committee, as well as its subcommittees, will not reconvene until early 1971, at which time the subcommittee will consider your letter. So because they had already just finished uh, reconvening, they had to wait until, un until it started again uh, before. But they did take it up. So that is why some of the correspondence that we shared um, earlier, like for instance, uh, what came from the uh, United Kingdom in, in terms of their response, uh, came at that point in time uh, to, to the subcommittee. Yes. Folks, uh, top of the hour, 8 o'clock news. When we return, we have more to share with you, and the conversation will continue with Dr. Steve McField, so please stay tuned. Radio Cayman Time Check is now 7.59. This time check is brought to you by our friends at Foster's. Price Rights Warehouse Sale is back with savings all over the store. 
Save up to $300 on Samsung and LG Smart 4K LED TVs. Get the Amazon Fire 7 tablet, 16 gig for $54.99. Save $15. And upgrade to the First Avenue King Cotton Sheet Set for $26.99. Save $10. Sale ends Wednesday, 30th of September, 2020. Live better for less at Price Right. The voice of the Cayman Islands. 89.9 FM in Grand Cayman and 93.9 FM in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Silver wings shining in the sunlight. Radio Cayman. The 8 a.m. news is proudly sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. For further information, please visit chamberpension.ky. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. Did you know that since May, in support of the COVID-19 Emergency Withdrawal Program, the Chamber Pension Plan leveraged IT and human resources to successfully review over 15,000 member applications, approve over 11,000 applications, and will pay over CI 126 million to our plan members. We are the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan, and we're here for you. For further information regarding the Emergency Withdrawal program visit chamberpension.ky and for information as it happens follow us on facebook linkedin or instagram email admin at pensions.ky or call 745-7630 your voice your choice for today's biggest news radio cayman the voice of the cayman island With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. Will Pinot, Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Commerce, says leadership Cayman members and panelists gathered specifically at Health City Cayman Islands for the second in-person seminar since COVID. The focus was on pandemic response and impact, with the panel and attendees examining what's been done in Cayman and what can still be done. Information is important in, in these times. A lot of uncertainty about how the world is responding to the pandemic. From the Cayman Islands standpoint, we've done a very good job. And so the, there were a lot of discussions about, you know, opening up the borders, what does that mean, how, how, what's our um, provisions for health care, uh, how have we, um, how has Health City in, in specific responded, and they've done some really great things to prepare uh, in the event of any outbreak. The next Leadership Command Seminar is taking place on September 30th. It will focus on infrastructure and environment. Join Meals on Wheels in the fight to end senior hunger in the Cayman Islands by participating in an island-wide Seniors Rock Dress Down Day on October 16th. Every weekday, over 120 Meals on Wheels volunteers deliver free meals to over 300 seniors, homebound, and disabled persons. To continue its mission, MOW manager Jennifer West says the charity raises funds to cover the cost of the meals. This Seniors Rock Dress Down Day aims to raise enough funds to feed seniors for an entire month. For just $5, anyone can pledge to feed a senior for a day. Meals on Wheels serves over 12,000 meals and soups per month, thanks to the support of our volunteers, as well as public and private funding. To place an order, register a Seniors Rock Day, or for more information, contact MOW on 769-1946 or email info at mealsonwheels.ky. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC, which will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News. A man armed with a knife has seriously injured two people near the former offices of the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Police say they have arrested the suspected attacker. The stabbings come during the trial of the suspected accomplices of the gunman who killed 12 people during an attack on Charlie Hebdo in January 2015 after the magazine published a caricature of the Prophet Muhammad. A senior cardinal, ordered to resign by the Pope, has protested against the way he was dismissed and rejected the accusations against him. Giovanni Angelo Becciu said he pleaded with the pontiff not to force him to go, as he put it, in front of the whole world. The dismissal is linked to the controversial property deal in London during Cardinal Becciu's time as the Vatican's Deputy Secretary of State. Turkish prosecutors have ordered the arrest of 82 people suspected of involvement in pro-Kurdish demonstrations six years ago that left more than 30 people dead. Among them are several mayors and former members of parliament for the opposition HDP, which the governing AK party associates with a banned Kurdish militant group. 
Thousands of farmers across India are staging angry protests against new laws which could change the way they sell what they grow. The controversial reforms will allow all farmers to sell directly to private companies, striking their own terms. The Spanish capital, Madrid, has ha added another eight areas to the 37 where coronavirus restrictions have been tightened. It brings the number of people affected by the curbs to more than a million. The Minsk city court has upheld a decision by a district judge to keep the Belarusian opposition leader Maria Kolyesnikova under arrest. She's become the face of the weekly Sunday mass protests against President Lukashenko, whose victory in the August elections is widely seen as having been rigged. The ruling means she will stay in jail until at least early November. BBC News. The 8 a.m. news is proudly sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. For further information, please visit chamberpension.ky. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. We are a not-for-profit, member-centric plan with a democratically elected volunteer board of trustees representing all sectors of the Cayman Islands economy. We have an all-in expense ratio of less than 1%, over 20,000 members and 490 million US dollars in assets under management. We were the first multi-employer pension plan approved by the regulator in the late 1990s. And today, we are still strong, secure, and are here for our employees and employees alike. If you would like to join or require further information, visit chamberpension.ky. And for information as it happens, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Email admin at pensions.ky or call 745-7630. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. Stay in touch with Radio Cayman for the latest in news and information. Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, www.radiocayman.gov.ky. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. Hey, hon, what you doing? Putting things away in the shed since it's hurricane season. You know, preparing for the better. Don't you mean preparing for the worst? No, for the better. Since we have Brit K Insurance, we're fully covered against hurricanes. Plus, they have response teams ready to help us file a claim faster. If I were preparing for the worst... I'd watch football all day. Still don't get it. Isn't there a match on? Oh, really? Let Brit K prepare you for the better this hurricane season. Call 949-8699 or visit BritK.ky. That thing we've been saying for 64 years, ignore it. Eat the KFC wings, drink the KFC gravy, fill up on fries. Just please forget the thing we normally suggest. You know, that thing you used to do with your tongue after finishing a delicious piece of our KFC chicken. We get it. It's not easy. There's a reason why it's been our slogan for over half a century. But the world's drastically changed of late. And as soon as we can embrace the change, the sooner we can all get back to doing what we do best. KFC. It's good. Good morning, Kemal. Let's take a look at your latest weather conditions. Present temperature, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, but it feels like about 88. Winds coming out of the north at 8 miles per hour with gusts up to 13. Relative humidity, 83%. Barometric pressure is at 29.94 and rising. Cloudiness and showers associated with a trough over the Cayman area will influence our weather conditions for the next 24 hours. And radar images show scattered showers in and around the Cayman area moving towards the northwest. Our forecast for today, cloudy skies with a 60% chance of showers and some thunder. Showers may become locally heavy at times. Temperatures will rise to the low 80s. Winds will be east to southeast, 10 to 15 knots mainly over Grand Cayman and 5 to 10 knots over Cayman Brack, Little Cayman. Seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights of 2 to 4 feet. Later tonight, partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with a 40% chance of showers and some thunder. Showers may become locally heavy at times. Temperatures will fall to the upper 70s and winds will be southeast 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. We're in a high tide. Low tide is coming up at 11.54 this morning. It's going to be high again at 6.33 this evening. For tomorrow, low tide is at 12.48 a.m., high at 6.27 a.m., low at 12.48 p.m., and high at 7.12 p.m. Sunset this evening is at 6.17, sunrise for tomorrow at 6.16. And the outlook is for a decrease in cloudiness and showers from Saturday morning as the trough moves west of the Cayman Islands. That's the latest weather right here at Radio Cayman. During these unprecedented 
times, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the Cayman Strong Series. The Cayman Strong Series is brought to you by On Course Cayman. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualified team. On Course Cayman, health, wellness, and happiness. Change your thinking. Change your life. Practicing forgiveness is a healthy habit. As pastor and best-selling author Gary Chapman wrote in his book, The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate, forgiveness is not a feeling, it is a commitment. It is a choice to show mercy, not to hold the offense up against the offender. Forgiveness is an expression of love. Change your thinking. Change your life. Radio Cayman's Cayman Strong series was brought to you by On Course Cayman. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualified team. On Course Cayman, health, wellness, and happiness. These days, feelings of loneliness, anxiety, stress, and depression can be overwhelming. Just know you are not alone. On Course Cayman offers private mental health services for children, teens, adults, and groups. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualifying team. On Course Cayman, health, wellness, and happiness. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit subway.ky to place your catering order today. Good morning, K-Man. Let's take a look at your latest traffic situation. Of course, most streets in Georgetown are busy at the moment with moderate traffic. And coming out of the east-west, good flow of traffic. The majority of traffic has uh, eased up uh, on that side. But looking at the Kingsport Center area, traffic going along the Inletford Pearson Highway, quite busy, slow-paced, similar with Crew Road. And uh, once getting to the uh, four-way stop, uh, the traffic lights... Progressing on to Hulda Avenue, on to Elgin Avenue, Thomas Russell Way. Uh, experience that usual traffic flow. West Bay Road looking good at the moment. And remember, roads are still wet and we expected more rains today. So you got to be safe while driving. Look out for pedestrians and those on bicycles and motorbikes. Traffic report brought to you by our friends at Subway. It's the return of the sub of the day. Come into any Subway location and order the six inch sub of the day for only $3.50 or get the full meal for just $6. Wow, a meal in Cayman for only $6? Yes, and it's never been easier to get your favorites from Subway. Just stop in, message WhatsApp at 929 4658, order online, or use Let's Eat or the Bento app. Check out their Facebook or Instagram for the latest store hours. Subway, eat fresh. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit subway.ky to place your catering order today. Maintaining a strong mind and body through sports and general healthy living is a good course of action. But what about your spiritual man, your inner man? He has to be awakened, fed, exercised, strengthened, and led according to the will of God. So, have you heard the call? I'm Evangelist Brother Joseph Joey Ebanks, and I'm inviting you to worship Wednesday and Thursday nights at 7.30. We are bringing the word of God to our communities as Jesus commanded. Faith comes by hearing. So come and hear. Bring your own chair or simpler park and listen to the word of God from your vehicle, covering the Cayman Islands with the word of God, one community at a time. Registration is ongoing for the Department of Tourism Pride webinars. The tourism industry is ever-evolving. Stay up to date with the industry standards, best practices, and ensure you are the best ambassador for Cayman. The Pride webinars offer customer service, business acumen, history, and cultural classes. Webinars will run on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. To see the full schedule and register, visit pride.ourcayman.ky. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. 
Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We're not taking any phone calls at the moment because uh, we have some documents that we want to share with you. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, Dr. Mark Field uh, petitioned to the uh, United Nations. We're talking 50 years later. We're here talking uh, about the same thing. So, and within in those 50 years, we really, really haven't moved any closer to where some of us believe that we we need to be, and that is being demonstrated uh, more clearly every day um, in, in in the Cayman Islands, and I I I don't think I need to say any more um, in that regard for now. Um, so just giving you a sequence of events, uh, the 8th of December, 1970, Dr. Mark Field wrote to the United Nations. Uh, his letter was transmitted then to the petitions section of the uh, trusteeship system. Uh, they wrote back to him and said that their meeting had just recently um, concluded, but um, it would be brought forward at the um, at the next meeting. So then, at its uh, 789th meeting on the 7th, of April 1971, the Special Committee on the Situation with Regards to the Implementation of the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples um, adopted uh, their 156th report of the Subcommittee on Petitions, and uh, Dr. Steve McField's uh, petition was included in that, that as far as being a United Nations document is can be identified as a slash a forward slash that is a forward slash a c dot one o nine forward slash petition or p e t dot one one six one. So uh, the note then goes on to say, in accordance uh, with the above-mentioned decision of the Special Committee, the Chairman, in a letter dated the 20th of April 1971, transmitted to the Permanent Representative of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland to the United Nations for the attention of his government, that is the UK government, a copy of the communication requesting any comments or observations which his government might wish to make concerning its contents. And now with the, with the communications that we're talking about is Dr. Steve McPhee's letter that he wrote to the United yeah. Nations, and he read that earlier for us. So in a note then dated on the 25th of June, 1971, the acting permanent representative of the United Kingdom transmitted to the chairman the observations of his government as requested. The text of the note uh, is reproduced below, and I'll read it for you. It goes on to say, The acting permanent representative of the United Nations of Great Britain and Northern Ireland to the United Nations presents his compliments to the chairman of the special committee of 24 and has the honor to enclose herewith with reference to Dr. Navia Carillo's letter of the 20th of April, 1971, a copy of the observations of the United Kingdom government on the communication circulated as a slash ac.109 uh, PET1161. Observations of the United Kingdom government on the petition from Mr. A.S. Macfield concerning the Cayman Islands. Mr. Macfield indicates that his plea, please, are made on behalf of Cayman Nationals in Canada. There are three Caymanians in Canada, uh, one of them being Mr. McField. The other two would not dis uh, endorse the tenor of his letter. And you heard Dr. McField um, explain to you that that did occur. And later on, he will, he will tell you why they didn't... Um, endorse it. Um, and you'll see the difference between the way he was treated and the way that they were, were treated after this yes. letter went to the United Nations as well. Uh, it says, no pleas have been made by Mr. Mark Field or anyone else 
to the Cayman Islands government. Uh, should we address these things uh, sentence by sentence as a go and yes. give you an opportunity yes. to arm that? So th- what they're saying is that you didn't make any pleas to the uh, Cayman Islands government. Is, is that true? That's not true. I have been writing them, asking them to, for assistance, for scholarship, because I was going into law school. And it was I was and at the time I was going to law school, I didn't have permanent residence in Canada. I was mm-hmm. treated as a foreign student. Okay. It was something like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year plus plus my board room and board. And I keep writing to them and asking them for assistance. And then um they've never answered my letter. And then when I keep pressing, pressing for them, I got a letter from the government saying that please consider all correspondence between them as closed. It mm-hmm. means don't write them anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was that was what that was what I was told. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I can I can point out that in 1976, 1976, I wrote, and I think the permanent secretary at that point in time in the Ministry of, of um, Education, um, or, or may have been um, the Honorable Linford Pearson, and I received communications back from them because I was seeking. Um, financial assistance, a scholarship or whatever to do my postgraduate degree. And I was advised that the government in 1976, 1976, 1977, did not provide funds for postgraduate degrees. You know, and this, and, and so, mine was you know. in 1970, yeah. 1969, 1970. Mm-hmm. And so you, you can understand how, how hard it was for me um, after working to get my first degree by myself and then getting going into law school now, how hard it was now for me to survive because in law school, I was working full time. I was working to, from 11 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning in a, in a steel mill. And um, and the, the school said it was impossible for me to, to, to at least go on to a second year with, um, with, with a load of work that I had to do and working full time. It was mm-hmm. impossible. It, that, that, it was impossible and, and they would not... Um, uh, condoned the, the fact that I had to work full time because I remember some uh, years ago on this show you uh, pointed out to us that sometimes you, you know you went to class and you were falling asleep in that's class. That's right. That's and right. And the professor said to you, you know, ask you what was happening, and you told him. They told you know, I was. was they thought I was work. sick. Yes, they yes, thought I yes. had some sickness. Yes. And it and I and and they called me before they 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 they, they commit a committee. Uh, to uh, to say what what was wrong with me to like to, trying to expel me because I was you know, and because. And not only that, because I was the only I was the only black person in the law school mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of six hundred of six hundred students, mm-hmm. six hundred law students, okay. and um, and when I told them that I was working full time, they just could not believe it. They say it's impossible. You cannot carry this load and work from eleven o'clock in the night till seven o'clock in the morning and come to school and and and, and get through. You will not make it. They mm-hmm. said it would be impossible for me yeah, to do so. Yeah. So the United Kingdom then uh, goes on to say. So they said. That their first uh, comment was that um, you you didn't uh, make any pleas to the Cayman Islands government, which you say is incorrect. Mm-hmm. It goes on to say that the uh, comment on the system of government of the Cayman Islands, quoted in the second paragraph of Mr. Macfield's letter, is in no way a statement of the views of the Cayman Islands government. It is an extract from an article entitled, As I See It, written by a reporter of uh, the Caymanian newspaper. It appeared on page 15 of the issue of that paper on the 5th of November, 1970. And as the title indicated, it reflected only the personal views of the author. Any comments on that? Doc? No, that's not, that is what the administrator said. <laughs> it, the, the author was the author was 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 relating what the administra- administrator said. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't what the author said. The author was 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 had had reprinted what the administrator had said mm-hmm. about about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Then they go on to say as regards to the constitutional position, a constitutional commissioner was as is reported in paragraph 10 of um, a particular document, uh, AC109-1.17, appointed. So it says that a um, constitutional commissioner was appointed by the United Kingdom government on January in January 1971, at the request of the Legislative Assembly of the Cayman Islands, the Constitutional Commissioner met 
with the Legislative Assembly and other bodies in the Cayman Islands, made himself available at centers in all districts for discussion with members of the public and talked to a large number of persons in the territory, both individually and in groups. His report will be carefully studied both by the United Kingdom government and in the Cayman Islands. So that would have been the um, Lord... Um, Lord Aswood. Uh, I think it was... Yeah, Asquith. As- 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 yes, yes, Lord As- As- Asquith, okay. yes. Uh-huh. Says, a note on scholarships for higher education is attached. It should be noted particularly that there is no record of any qualified Caymanian being refused financial assistance to enter any recognized institution of higher learning. Now, Brits, the UK, they, 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 they're good with words. Yes, so I'm going to read yes, this again. Yes. A note on scholarships for higher education is attached. It would be noted particularly that there is no record of any qualified Caymanian being refused financial assistance to enter. So he speaks that there is no record of anybody being refused financial assistance, yeah, but, but he doesn't speak, speak about scholarships. Scholarship. Scholarships and financial assistance could be two, ex- two ex- different ex- things. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Then he goes on to say all s- education in the territory is completely free and a new single comprehensive school has just been established for the use of the children of the islands. Education is compulsory for all children between the ages of 5 and 15, and an increasing number of children go on to A-levels free of charge. goes on to say scholarships for higher education are awarded in the Cayman Islands annually from funds made available both from local revenue and technical assistance from the United Kingdom government. Uh, In the decade preceding the 1970s, the Cayman Islands government awarded scholarships to qualified applicants subject to availability of funds. Do we want to add anything to that uh, uh, other than just the fact that they provided um, scholarships subject to available of funds? But to whom? To whom? To whom? To whom? To whom? They they, 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 uh, Unless you were a civil servant. And you, the, most of the civil right. servant the people, child of a citizen. child of civil servant mm-hmm. had scholarships, but but if you were if you were outside the civil service, you you didn't get scholarships. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it in, in Canada was not only the first time I I tried to get a scholarship. I remember trying to get a scholarship to go to dental technical school in Jamaica, three pounds ten a term, and they wrote back and told me that they um they that they didn't have any um. They didn't have any money to 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 to, mm-hmm. to 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 give me to go to dental technical school in in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. This this was back in the fifties before I went to sea. Okay, okay, okay. So then I go on to say, in nineteen seventy, however, with a rising economy, the government adopted a policy to award. A, a, sorry, the government adopted as policy the award of scholarship on a non-competitive basis or plan to qualified secondary school leavers to pursue higher education overseas. Fields of studies specified as areas open to scholarship cover the entire range of skills required at government level and in the private sector. So it was non-competitive um, scholarships that they say that uh, we started to award in 1970. goes on to say that scholarships awards commencing in the new academic year were recently made to nine high school students while financial assistance was extended to three students currently enrolled in North American Universities. So at least in that paragraph, they did acknowledge and made a distinction between scholarships and um, uh, financial mm-hmm. assistance because 
they, they made it quite clear that they didn't address the whole issue of scholarships, but pointed out that they are in, yes. uh, previously. It says, for the present academic year, there are 23 government-sponsored students receiving higher education overseas. Fields of study cover education, medical science, engineering, humanities, and social sciences. Nine of these students are being financed under technical assistance from the United Kingdom government and are enrolled in British institutions. The remaining students are financed from local revenue and are enrolled at the University of the West Indies and colleges in Jamaica, while three are in North American universities. There is no record that any Caymanian suitably qualified for admission to an institution of higher education has ever been refused a scholarship or financial assistance from the Cayman Islands government. What, Comments there, Doc. What lies, what, 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 what a bunch of untruths. What a bunch of untruths. Um, that, has, that has never been the, 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 the position um, that, no, that uh, um, there is no record of, uh, that any Caymanian suitable qualified for admission to an institution of higher education has ever been refused. I was not only um, admitted to, univers- to Vancouver, to University of British Columbia, but also to Vancouver City College mm-hmm, mm-hmm. first, and then on to UBC, and then to UBC Law School, and was denied a scholarship. So what they did, they denied the whole thing, but when it, come, when it came to, the, to my letter my, and the petition, they never admitted anything that I said that was, was true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what they did, they used the other students, when they contacted them, and they, and, and, and they discovered that my letter had had, had such a, a profound effect on the United Nations, they would not support me with it. And then they used that too to say, well, that, that, that my claim was unfounded. That's, 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 that's what the usual colonial system, how the usual colonial system is, 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 is done. Okay, uh, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we're going to have Dr. McField share with you the repercussions that uh, emanated from in the Cayman Islands after he made this petition to the United, Kingdom, uh, United Nations. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. I grew up in a Canadian village with a general store that had just about anything you could ever need. That's what I'm reminded of every time I go into West Bay Pharmacy. It's not just because it's well stocked with necessities and oddities, but also because it's like our community hub. The staff treat customers like friends. Ron and the team of pharmacists have kept my family patched up and flu-free for years, and there are usually a few good laughs mixed in. They are truly taking care of my health and my family's health. West Bay Pharmacy is the very best of Cayman kind. Green Turtle, modern solutions to get you through the new normal. Download the Green Turtle app now and top up yours or a loved one's phone with any mobile carrier in any destination. Home delivery of laptops, tablets, phones, accessories, and iTunes and major online retailer gift cards. And now, home deliveries of groceries and courier service. Guaranteed delivery within two hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Visit their list of products at greenturtle.ky or download the Green Turtle app today. Green Turtle is not only the future of mobile, but today it can help save a life. Take a ride on the Green Turtle Express today. Download the Green Turtle app, the future of mobile, saving lives today. It's time to buy smart. It's time to buy Ropers. Find everything for your home and kitchen at low prices at Ropers. Your neighborhood store. Value integrity. Ropers also offers complete janitorial service for commercial, industrial, and residential. They get the job done right every time. One twenty two Industrial Way, nine four nine twenty five eleven, or email janitorial at ropers.ky. Clean up your spending with Ropers and stay prepared. Nine four nine twenty five eleven Ropers providing products and services for better public health. Stronger, wider, higher, lighter. 
the all-new Ford Ranger Raptor. Powerfully built with a 2.0 diesel Panther engine and 210 horsepower. Modern with leather interior and 8-inch touchscreen. Sync 3 technology and power features. Tough. Built to handle the off-road with four-wheel drive, terrain modes, and a 10-speed automatic transmission. Coming early October to Vamped Motors, Walker's Road. To find out more and to test drive the bold new Ford Ranger Raptor, visit Vamped Motors, Walker's Road, or call 949-8288. As the community continues to take precautions from COVID-19, it is important to stay prepared for other disasters now that we are in the hurricane season. Here are some post-hurricane safety tips from the Department of Environmental Health. Cistern water designated for the purposes of drinking, cooking, and bathing must be disinfected before use after a hurricane. Simply leave the water for one minute after it begins to boil or to disinfect with bleach. Add three ounces of chlorine bleach to every thousand gallons of water. A residual bleach smell is an indicator that the water has been properly disinfected. For full guidance on post-hurricane safety tips, visit www.deh.gov.ky. System one loaded. 1 800 534 8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1 800 534 8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record. This is For the Record with Ord Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I want to point out that uh, we have opened the phone lines now because we've read from all of the relevant documents uh, pertaining to Dr. McField's petition to the uh, United Nations in 1970. Doc, one of our uh, listeners has written in and said, um, can you say whether or not the other two persons that um, re uh, retracted their statements uh, were they threatened um, by the government of the Cayman Islands, or, or did they feel threatened? Why they why they retracted their their uh, or, or pulled back their support when they were contacted? I don't know um, because after they pulled back their support from me, I didn't have anything to do with them anymore. I went on to to, to try to make my own life, and um, and I sort of separated from them. But um, it would it would be interesting to see um, the correspondence between the United Kingdom and the Cayman Islands on, 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 the, on the whole matter and the United Kingdom and them. I just wonder how long it would be before all of those things are released and the, and the archives have the, the correspondence. But I didn't contact them after that. I was so despondent at the time that I decided to go on my own and to try to, um, to, try to, to, to grab a career because I was, I, I, I was adamant that no one was going to defeat me with um with, with getting a career because that is what it, um they they wanted and especially uh, they did not like because uh, I was start, I was I was an undergraduate at the time and um in in in, in political science and history and and, and 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 so forth and even when I came back to the Cayman Islands I remember speaking to one of the officials in the government and he says why did you go why did you take this political science course for and I said sorry it, 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 because I was in that, that what interests me and it was a prerequisite for law in international uh, law in, in private and public international law and, 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 and it's something that you do and he was very upset that I was this and he, and he said to me this political science thing um, it's, it's, it's not a trouble lots of trouble that's what he told me mm. but you know um, all right. I was persona non grata from from here for a long time, and um, when I even when I came back here, even when I came back here, I didn't even when I even when when I came back here. So so what I did, what I did then is that I um I heard that there was a law society scholarship, mm -hmm. and I applied for the light the law society scholarship, and then they asked me to come down for an interview, and I got the. The award, when I went back to Canada, they said they, I had been awarded the Law Society Scholarship. But when I, got, when I got back to Canada, lo and behold, they say it was only $1,500 a year. And I mean, $1,500 a year, couldn't even buy the books that I was reading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I, was, I was stuck again to, um, I was stuck again 
because I thought it was going to be like ten, fifteen, two hundred thousand dollars a year from the Law Society, and even after the even after I got the Law Society, it's got for fifteen hundred dollars a year. They wrote and told me that they didn't have the money then because they had to go and collect it from all the members of the Law Society, and that took weeks, sometimes months, before I got it, before I, before I got the money from them, and then. I decided, well, I can't fail my second year. Um, I can't work full time, and it's going to be hazardous for us, for me. So what I did, I, I discovered that I could, because I was a Caymanian, and because the Cayman Islands contributed to the University of the West Indies, and I didn't, you didn't have to pay there to go as a student. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got all of my credits from my first year law school in Canada transferred on to University of the West Indies. I went there. So I went into second year at the University of the West Indies. I didn't lose any, any of my credits. I went there and that's where I got my law degree. Okay. okay. And, now, and, and by the way, go, go ahead. And, and, and by the way, when I went to the University of the West Indies, I didn't get a scholarship from Cayman. I, was, I wasn't on a scholarship uh, there. And what, what I got from the Cayman Islands government then was $150 a month pocket money. That's what they so paid. That, that, that's what but, financial but, assistance. Finan that, financial, that, that. financial assistance was one hundred and fifty dollars, uh, uh, came on yes. dollars a month, pocket money. So that's what I lived on in Barbados, all of those um, for the for the to the time I was there. Okay. And then when I came back from when I when they told me that well, um, when I wanted to get back to Canada to do my articles, then um, I got recruited um, as clerk of the courts by Mister Jim Barden, and. And he asked me to stay on permanently, and and then they asked me to. They said that I could not go to the normal Manley Law School to do the to do the professional exam because Cayman had opted out, opted out of the treaty that they had um, with the um, with the um, Caribbean Bar Association, and that I had to go to England. So I decided to go up to Lincoln's Inn to do my to do my bar exams. And when I finished that and I came back, they I didn't have a uh, I, I didn't have a job. Uh, at all. They want me to go back down to the clerk of the court. So I said, listen, you can't have two clerk of the courts. The judicature law doesn't allow for two clerk of the courts. At the time it was. And um, so I um, I got a job after walking the streets for about six or eight to two months here. Mr. Jim got um, um, Governor Russell to uh, uh, to hire me as a Crown Counsel. So I went into in, 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 in the glass house on the third floor I was prosecuting with Mr. David Rich and, um, and Mr. Seymour Panton, and David Barwick was the Attorney General, and Mr. Donaldson was the was the was the legal draftsman. And even then, when I went there, I didn't have an office. They do, they refused to find an office for me. Uh, I was my office was in the library, working at the library. They did everything to discourage me to leave to go. And the thing, the thing was that they said I would soon go back to Canada and they would get rid of me. Mm. Even one of the magistrates told me, he said, I can't understand what you did to these people. But the pressure on him to not let me succeed was, 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 in, was profound. And he, he told me, he says, I just can't believe. And you know what he said to me? He says, one of these days you'll get recognized in your country. But he says, I don't understand why they, why they dislike you so much. And um, they put pressure on the courts not to let me succeed. That's what they said. Let don't let them succeed. And 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 the way they treated me in court um, was was really awful. It was like a, a master and a servant instead of a lawyer and a and a, and a magistrate. Wow! Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, a lot of people don't know, and and people blame me. They were blaming me when I was standing up for my rights. They were blaming me. For um for 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 fighting back mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people was oh the newspaper was you know the newspaper is the, is is the, is the medium for the for the elite and 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 so forth and they were printing all the bad stories about Macfield and Hercules clashes Macfield and this and that and and so forth and um and and then I became an enemy of my own people mm -hmm. um the usual colonial. Um, Pavlov system, yep, yep. where where you divide where, and conquer, you, you divide and conquer, where, yes. they, where they put your own people against you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, we're going to take a commercial break, folks. Please stay tuned for the record with Doctor Steve Macfield. We'll continue, so don't change that dial. We will be back shortly.
Green Turtle, modern solutions to get you through the new normal. Download the Green Turtle app now and top up yours or a loved one's phone with any mobile carrier in any destination. Home delivery of laptops, tablets, phones, accessories, and iTunes and major online retailer gift cards. And now, home deliveries of groceries and courier service. Guaranteed delivery within two hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Visit their list of products at greenturtle.ky or download the Green Turtle app today. Green Turtle is not only the future of mobile but today it can help save a life take a ride on the green turtle express today download the green turtle app the future of mobile saving lives today fidelity bank would like to thank all essential workers we salute your efforts and thank you for the sacrifices you've made to keep us all safe during these challenging times we're facing, our top priority is the health and safety of the communities we serve. And while it's true that things are changing rapidly every day, one thing that will never change is our commitment to giving you the best in sound financial solutions to help you during and after the coronavirus pandemic. At Fidelity Bank, our focus will always be you. Fidelity, we're good for you. It was a day that changed my life. No words can describe the feelings of seeing my baby boy sick for the first time. The overwhelming feeling of fear to be responsible for his health and happiness became my priority. So I did what any nurturing mother would do when their baby is sick. I took him to get some of the best medicine possible. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care, so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. Are you registered to vote? Registered to vote? Your vote matters because your vote is your voice. The next deadline to register to vote is the 1st of October. For more information about who is eligible and how to register, head to elections.ky or call 949-8047. Register before the 4th of January to vote in the next general election on the 26th of May, 2021. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me. We have uh, Dr. Steve McFeel. Uh, we've been discussing the um, petition that Dr. Steve McFeel wrote to the United Nations uh, Trustee Ship Council in 1970. The UK's response to the United Nations, the repercussions of that uh, received uh, by Dr. Steve McFeel. Now, we also notice um, that uh, they, they, they did, s because you, you had two complaints, you yes. know, one about, it's, you know, scholarships and education, yes. but the other one also seeking the United Nations assistance in informing the people of the Cayman Islands, yes. providing assistance yes. to the people of the Cayman Islands so that we could understand what options were on the table, you know, for us, uh, you know, how we could use the United Nations and everything. And basically, they glossed over that they by simply pointing it. out that a, con uh, a commissioner had been um, appointed yes. and uh, that what they had done in terms of the legislative assembly, uh, the various districts and stuff like that. But they basically, you know, glossed over it, just like they continue to do today to a certain extent. I mean, they what they have said is if the people of the Cayman Islands want independence, it's up for us you know, for us to decide. That's right. But they're not doing a whole and lot it, to it, encourage us anything. or to point out to us, you know, you know, what is available as a matter of fact, when we seek to advance our constitution further than they want it to go, then they throw the option in our laps and say, well, if you want this, then there's only one way to achieve it. And that is true independence. Like they, you know, uh, it's like the sword of Damocles hanging over your head. That is, a, that, you know, if either the, um, this or that. That's right. And, and what they're not doing, what they're not doing is their obligations on the Article 73. 
um, for de declaration of regarding non-self-governing territories, the Article 73. You, you, you have a copy of it there? Well, it says, Article mm -hmm. 7, members of United Nations yes. which have or assume responsibilities for the administration of territories whose people have not yet attained a full measure of self-government, recognize the principles that the interests of the inhabitants of these territories are permanent and, ex and, and accept as, sa as sacred trusts the obligation to promote to the utmost within the system of inter international peace and security established by the present charter the well-being of the inhabitants of these territories and to do this to this end a to ensure with due respect for the culture of the people's concern their political economic social and educational advancement their just treatment and their protection against abuses and b to develop self-government, to take due account of the political aspirations of the peoples and to assist them in the progressive development of their free political institutions according to the particular circumstances of each territory and its people and their var varying stages of advancement. C, to f further international peace, security. D, to promote constructive measures of development, to encourage research, and to co and to cooperate with one another, and when and where appropriate, with specialized international bodies, with a view to the practical achievement of the social, economic, scientific purposes set forth in this article, and e to transfer, transmit, to transmit regularly to the Secretary General for information purposes subject to such limitations as security and constitutional considerations may acquire may require statistical and other information of a technical nature relating to economic social and educational conditions in the territories for which they are respons respectively responsible other than those territories to which chapter um, 12 and 13 apply and members of the united nations also agree that their policy in respect of the territories to which this chapter applies, no less than in respect of their metropolitan areas, must be based on the general principles of good neighbor lists, due account being taken of the interests and well-being of the rest of the world in social, economic, and commercial matters. Mm -hmm. Those are the obligations of the administering countries to the, the to the non-self-governing territories, Article 73. And that's what I was asking that they that they that they force the British United Kingdom government to to abide by its, by the the the, con the contents of our, of our Article 73 mm -hmm. and 74. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, I, I I had it just now, and I lost it. So um. The the I wanted what I was going to share. I, I have to try to find it again. I just lost it. Was the, okay. The. But so go go go, go ahead. So, Keep, so you go ahead, dog. Yeah. Since that time now, um, the the United Nations has offered many scholarships. Nearly every, nearly every. I would say not nearly ever, but most of the major players in the United Nations has offered scholarships now to to people in non self governing territories, mm -hmm. and and uh, I and, and I I looked at it last night. Um, they offer scholarships and awards to non self governing territories of the um, people to peoples, and I noticed that um, uh, Cuba has offered many scholarships. Um, Canada has. Um, in in two thousand between two thousand nine and two thousand eighteen, Canada has offered scholarship to Anguilla, to Bermuda, to British Virgin Islands, to Cayman Islands, to Montserrat, to Saint Helena, Turks and Caicos Islands. Cuba has offered scholarships to Anguilla, to Bermuda, and um, West Sahara, and um, India has offered scholarships. In technical and economic cooperation programs, and uh, they have offered scholarships. And um, and Mexico has offered scholarship to Anguilla, Bermuda, Gibraltar, Cayman Islands, 
Turks and Caicos Island, British Virgin Islands, Montserrat, New, Col- New Caledonia, Pitcairn, Western Sahara. New Zealand has offered scholarships. Qatar has offered scholarships. Um, has offers Qatar has the Kingdom of Qatar has offers um, scholarships to um, to the non self governing territories. Um, these scholarships are, are available. Singapore has offered scholarships to Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, um, Montserrat, and Tokelo, and Turks and Caicos Islands. The United Kingdom and Ireland has offered scholarships also um, to Anguilla, Cayman Islands, and Montserrat, and Turks and Caicos Islands. And um, the United States has offers, offered offers scholarships. And um, there are scholarships offered even from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From Cuba. So, like I said before, Saudi Arabia. Russia has offered scholarships. Lots of people from Jamaica and all those other places go into, into Russia. Saudi Arabia has offered scholarships. It says, noted. Uh, um, the permanent mission of Saudi Arabia to the United Nations informed the Secretary of the, follow- of the following scholarships offered by Saudi Arabia to students from non self governing territories. Bermuda, they're offering five scholarships to Bermuda. Mm-hmm. They're offering five scholarships to Cayman Islands. They're offering five scholarships to, to the Falkland Islands. They're offering five scholarships to St. Helena. Mm-hmm. They're offering five scholarships to Turks and Caicos Island and five sh- scholarships to British Virgin to the to the to the British Virgin Islands. Okay. And Singapore is offering scholarships to Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Montserrat, Tokelo, Turks and Caicos Islands. Sri Lanka is also offering scholarships. They're offering scholarships um um says in in a note verbal dated the eighth of March two thousand nineteen, the permanent mission of Sri Lanka to the United Nations informed the Secretary of the following, the Minister of City Planning, Water Supply and Higher Education of Sri Lanka conducts two scholarship programs for foreign students to follow undergraduate and postgraduate program, namely Sri Lanka Presidential Scholarship for Foreign Students Program and Sri Lanka Commonwealth Scholarship Program. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you there, Doc. We have a caller. We want to grab the caller before we go to our headline news at 9 o'clock. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hi, good morning, good morning. Good morning, how Dr. are you? Dr. McPhail and Mr. Connor. I just wanted to call Dr. McPhail and say that we're out here listening to you right now and just listening to your story as a young man, a young Caymanian man that was just really striving for your education and looking for that support and really hoping that your government would have seen you as an asset and had no, you know, no second thoughts whatsoever in supporting you with your chosen field, given your educational track record at that time. And it's just so unfortunate what you had to go through. But I wanted to say, you know, as a young Caymanian, your story is very inspiring. And we're very proud of you and everything that you went through to get where you've gotten. And still, you have to fight all these years for um, anything in your own country. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And and that is the reason why I um, um, feel so bad this morning. Mm. Because... Don't worry, Doc. We, 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 we're behind you. Everyone is behind you. We, we're all behind you. And uh, we're going to make sure that you are recognized in this country and not wait until you are six feet down under to do so. We're going to do it while you're alive. And that's why we're going to keep you on this on this uh, platform. I re- really want to thank that caller for, uh, you know, uh, Are you calling. still that caller? Sorry? Yeah. Are you oh, still yes, there? Yes. No, this, and the thing is, the thing is, all that you've went through almost 50 years ago or about 50 years ago now, mm-hmm. young people, young Caymanians in this country are still going through <laughs> exactly. it. And they're so downtrodden that yes. many of them give up. They don't have the strength that you have. And that is why it's so important for young Caymanians to know that it is distressing. It is heartbreaking when you fight, especially as a public school student, when you fight through the system at all odds, knowing that out there in the Cayman Islands, 
people are jeering you because you're going to public school. People are saying the public school systems are this and the public school systems are that. But let me tell you, I have six children in the public school. And yes, the government does need to support these schools and these children a lot more. But we are fortunate for the teachers that we have. And we as parents need to stand behind our children and stand behind our teachers and make, these, make the whole Caribbean see what Caymanians can do even in a public school system. And it is disheartening because I have a daughter right now and she has struggled from preschool to now, and she's a year 12 public government school student, and she's been denied a scholarship for her year 12 A-level. So I know, I know what you mean, and it is still happening now. And young people need to know that there are success stories out there, but your country will try to fight you down, and unless we build each other up, nobody's getting anywhere. Thank you, ma'am. And that is the reason why I, I my, my whole life has been about education and, and advancement. I never r- run off from money because I realized that you can't take it with you when you go, but you can, exactly. but, but you can, you, you, but your education, uh, you can, you can influence other people and you can, and, and that can influence many, many, many more people. And That's that is the reason, that is the reason why I chose not to go into the, to, to fight for money. I ask, I ask, I ask God for, for, for blessing, for, for, for health and strength and, and for, uh, and for great, um, a, a great mind, and that's what I he gave to the gift he gave to me, and I'm so happy that I didn't mm-hmm. give up early. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, caller, I want to thank you very much for that. We're going to our headline news, but please continue to uh, to listen because we have a lot more to share with you. When we return, we're going to shift gears and we're going to go back to the visiting mission that uh, came to the Cayman Islands in April of 1977. That United Nations uh, mission, it may not, or it may or may not have been spurred by Dr. Max Fields' uh, request to the United Nations as well. So folks, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Satisfaction is guaranteed 24 hours a day, whether it's music or information. From Grand Cayman to Cayman Brack to Little Cayman, we've got you covered. You ever hear a thing like that? Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. Today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. It's only two species that we have here on the island. Your voice, your choice. It is in the best interest of the people of these islands. Local, regional, international. This is Headlines from Radio Cayman's newsroom. Today's biggest news. Government reported 181 COVID-19 test results on Thursday. All came back negative. There are currently 129 people in government isolation. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has issued a rare personal apology for the killing of a South Korean official. Mr. Kim reportedly told a South Korean counterpart, Mu Jae-in, that the, quote, disgraceful affair should not have happened. South Korea has said the 47-year-old was found by troops floating in the North's waters. He was then shot dead and his body was set on fire, according to Seoul. And high-ranking Vatican official Cardinal Giovanni Angelo Bacciui has unexpectedly resigned, but has revealed he was told to do so by Pope Francis. He said he was suspected of giving church money to his brothers and denied any wrongdoing. The cardinal was a close aide to the pope and previously had a key job in the Vatican's Secretariat of State. He became involved in a controversial deal to invest in a luxury London building with church funds. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. For the latest in news and information, follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, radiocayman.gov.ky. Your voice, your choice, your radio. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, Dr. Steve McField. Discussions on the United Nations. We have discussed Dr. Steve McField's petition to the United Nations Trusteeship um, Council. And uh, which was then transmitted on, uh, went to the petition section, went on to the um, council. Uh, They got a response from the United Kingdom representatives uh, at the United Nations uh, in relation to Dr. McField's concerns. Uh, Like I pointed out earlier, his concern not only had to do with, um, you know, education and scholarships being awarded in the Cayman Islands, but also... uh, education, political education for the people of the Cayman Islands in relation to the role of the United Nations and the obligations that 
were, are, were placed and still are placed on the United Kingdom mm -hmm. as the administering um, country. So in 1977, April of 1977, we had a three-man team come to the Cayman Islands. Uh, the chairman was a gentleman by the name of uh, Vinabobo. I think he was um, uh, from Tunisia, uh, possibly. I'll look that up later. We had a, a Mr. Seely from uh, Trinidad, and there was another uh, an, another person. They had meetings throughout the mm -hmm. islands, mm -hmm. and um, it's a United Nations document that details all of that. So there was a meeting that was held with the governor on um, the 18th of April, and the, the United Nations document speaks to the fact that it says, responding to a question concerning the intentions of the United Kingdom with regards to the future political and constitutional development of the Cayman Islands, the governor told the visiting mission that the United Kingdom was very proud of its record of decolonization, a process which was continuing. One of the rules of a governor was to keep the constitutional options before the people who had the right to decide their own future. People of the Cayman Islands would like the status quo to continue. Now, I'm going to um, <laughs> parse this for a little bit. The United Kingdom was proud of their record of decolonization. <laughs> but there were some African countries where Political leaders were imprisoned. That's right. Several of them. Yeah. The people like uh, Robert M Mugabe, despite what you may yes, think of him, yes. uh, you know, today, uh, yes. uh, you know, were imprisoned. Kenya. Because, yep. Seven years in jail in England uh -huh, with a yes, trial. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You had uh, Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumumba. Of Lumumba. course, that was the Belgian uh, Belgians. Yes. But he was, he, he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the record of decolonization was not, um, a pretty one. In the Caribbean, not so much because people like Bustamante and Manley took it into their hands, um, you know, in Barbados, um, Barrow. And, and in Trinidad, and, and in Trinidad yes, and stuff like that. Yes. But other than that, but what he says that the people of the Cayman Islands would like the status quo to continue. And I must say that he was correct in that. And you will hear some of the statements and the protestations of people who went uh, appeared before this United Nations committee. In some districts, mm -hmm. it was nice and they were welcomed. In other districts, they were treated harshly. They were treated like the enemy there. And I'm going to share all of that with you as well. So the governor uh, then in his defense of the UK's position goes on to say that early in the year, uh, Mr. Patrick C. Duff and Mr. Harry um, H. Stanley of the United Kingdom Foreign and Commonwealth Office had very frank meetings with members of the Legislative Assembly to discuss uh, with them their attitude to constitutional matters. The members had stated that the territory did not wish to move forward constitutionally as yet. But yet, that's what they yes. said, but you know we know that people like Mr. Armand Panton, right. you know, had a completely you know different view in relation to that. So it goes on to say, with reference to the question of the presiding officer of the Legislative Assembly, the governor continued to preside over the, the, its deliberations. He had placed a paper before an informal meeting of the Legislative Assembly urging them to recommend the selection of a speaker as provided for in the Constitution. But the proposal had been turned down. He said further that there were sometimes verbal battles on the floor which needed firm handling from the chair probably because the Caymanian community was small, it was hard to find an impartial chairman. Can so you again, you see, we, we were our own yeah. enemies. Yes, he put yes, it yes. in 1977. Mm -hmm. They put before our members of the Legislative Assembly, pointed out to them mm -hmm. that our 1972 con constitution contain provisions in it for them to choose their speaker, and they said, no, people, do you 
wonder are you surprised in terms of where we are now and don't be surprised to a certain extent because we still have people today in the 21st century the 25th of september 2020 who have similar thoughts and That's think right. similarly doc yes. anything you want to say I think I've said enough on that. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 they were they were they were against their own people, mm -hmm. and and you know it's it reminds me of something Mr. Gilbert McLean said to me a few days ago. We were discussing something similar to what we're talking about now, and he was saying that um, uh, the 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 late or long when he was governor, mm -hmm. when Gilbert was exiled from here. And when Gilbert, then they brought Gilbert back and gave him a job yeah. in the government. Atherson, Atherson Long, yes. Atherson Long. Mm -hmm. He said to Gilbert, you know, Cayman and people are cruel to each other. They are cruel to each other. And that is the reason why they, they don't want to see each other in, 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 in places of, of, of power mm -hmm. or places of, of, of um, ex, in exalted positions. And, and that... That also brings to mind the, the the sayings of Gerard that they all wants to be the captains, and if they all cannot be captains, they will go down into the ship and ship and 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 wreck the engine so the ship cannot sail. So we are own we our own worst enemies. Can you imagine pointing out to them that you ought to have a speaker, something somebody other than the other than the administrator mm -hmm. and the, other than the governor speak presiding over your house, and you reject it? Yep. We prefer to have yeah, somebody else to rule, over us. rule over us. <laughs> okay, so so we go. It goes on and says, um, the governor uh, went on to say that the governor went on to say that Caymanians were worried about the fragile nature of their economy, whose two pillars were tourism and offshore financial operations. The fear was that if they became independent there might be a flight of capital as they said had happened elsewhere. Uh, governor went on to say that after the last general election, the politicians had published a statement in which they expressed their opposition to further constitutional adma advancement. We were our own enemy, our own enemy. Summing up, the governor re reiterated that the ultimate goal of the administering power for the Cayman Islands was self-determination. However, and I'll read that again. Let's, 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 let's read that again. Summing up, the governor re, re, reiterated that the ultimate goal of the administering power for the Cayman Islands was self-determination. However, the United Kingdom had always made clear that it would be guided by the wishes of the people, the options were always kept before them. Commenting on the fact that the portfolio of finance and the post of attorney general were still held by non-elected members of the executive council, the governor said that in the view of a constitutional advisor, the executive council member portfolio arrangement is regarded as a rather short-lived period. One might expect pressure to develop, as had happened elsewhere, for elected members to take over the financial and legal portfolios at a later constitutional stage. He had delegated his responsibility for finance and development to the financial secretary who was a Caymanian. So let's go back at that. So we, at that point in time, the United Kingdom had expectations that not only the portfolio of finance, but the, the portfolio, portfolio of, of attorney, attorney general, general yes, yes, would be in the hands of, of a, an elected, yeah, an, an elected, elected member. member an elected member, yeah, and, an elected position. Yeah, and, and we, we had how many constitutional changes since then? We had uh, one in 2009, yes, and we yes. still have an attorney general who who's is a, a civil, civil servant. servant. Who's a civil servant. We keep going backwards instead of... That's right. And, you know, when if we keep backing up and backing up soon or later, you're going to be 
right on the edge of the cliff. That's and right. the next step is uh, that you're going to fall, fall right over the cliff. You yes. keep going backwards and backwards. So let's go on. Responding to a suggestion to allow full internal self-government um, or to extend for a longer period uh, than 18 months, the governor advised that the question would better be put to Mr. Duff and Mr. Stanley as the Foreign and Commonwealth Office personally speaking, he said that it was um, a twilight um, area in terms of self-government. <laughs> he informed the mission that there had been political parties eight years ago, but that they had collapsed before the 1972 elections. In the last 1976 election, a group of candidates had supported each other on their individual platforms. For the first time, they appeared to have an operating political organization. Most of the current members of the Legislative Assembly were associated with the groundswell of politics. Amongst, among them were two bus drivers, one shopkeeper, two insurance agents, and one accountant. Very few of the members represented big business. Well, uh, didn't have to represent big yes. business because biz, big business stayed in the background no, and, directed, and, 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 and directed and directed everything. Them. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> it goes on to say the last uh, election had been fought mostly on criticisms of the previous administration, particularly on public uh, expenditures and public works, its programs, and the personalities of the members of the Executive Council also came under fire. There was a denigration of people and mutual recrimination as to whether the other side wanted to move forward constitutionally. They, mm -hmm. That was always used. They would always use that I word yes, and point yes, that yes. and that was would scare people off. We do have a caller. Let's take the caller before we go to the break. Paul, caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, uh, OC to you and uh, Dr. McField. Good morning, sir. How are you? Sir. Uh, I'm I'm very, very thankful. Um, I, 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 well, Dr. McField, know my position as it relates to him. Uh, there's no reason that he should not have been given uh, the title of QC in his own mm -hmm, country. Mm -hmm. Whilst Eric Tom, Dick and Hara came in and got it, uh, that, that wanted it. Um, but um, we we are we in Cayman don't don't want the, the ability to to uh, have more say for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We we want to be ruled by people uh, uh, who, who we have to call our masters. Um, and you know it is it is really really sad. What what Cayman really needs? No, let me tell you what Cayman needs. Cayman needs a group of young vibrant minds to govern this country who will not take uh, the politics as a career. Mm -hmm. we got and some we got some old minds, too, that are in that the category, right. too. Okay. You know? <laughs> well, there, there you go. There you okay. go. They will not take it, uh, will not take politics as a career, decide where we're going we're gonna to go, and we're going to do what we have to do in mm -hmm. two terms. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, Make the changes that needs to be made, mm -hmm. and not worried not worry whether you're getting reelected or not. Right, uh, and and that I believe is the approach that needs to be. Uh, but too far, far too many times we're seeing career politicians, and 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 we're not getting what we should be getting at the end of the day. I mean, you know, they 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 criticize uh, the, the 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 first premier there, Mr. Bush. They criticized him, you know, you know, when he was when he stood up against against uh, the UK by taking him to court and stuff. But if we had more of that happening, we we would have less abuse coming to us. And I mean, I am, I, I am, I am quite concerned with the direction we're going because some of the some of the matters that are going to the legislative assembly to be debated, and surely we'll we'll we'll, we'll get its passage. Uh, you know, it clearly will, will, will be passed because. It, it's a it's a situation where it must pass, yeah. So um, 
I am I am very concerned about some of the the, the stuff that I see going to the not not getting any public consultation at all. And and, and that is that, that is very worrying. When when things that is going to be affecting uh, the, 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 the 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 public to great extent, and there's no public consultation on it. Mm-hmm. So that that is that is my contribution this morning. Thank thank you thank you very much, caller, for thank that. You, you have a great day that. and uh, enjoy your yes, weekend as yes. well. Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. Please stay tuned. The conversation with Dr. Steve McBeal will continue shortly. It's time to buy smart. It's time to buy Ropers. Find everything for your home and kitchen at low prices. Ropers, appliances, dishware, bulk foods, and so much more. With huge savings, Ropers is stocked for your hurricane supplies. Don't cut back on your needs. Cut back on your spending with Ropers. Your neighborhood store, value, integrity. Ropers Enterprises, 122 Industrial Way. Call 949-2511. Clean up your spending with Ropers. Ropers, providing products and services for better public health. Fidelity Bank would like to thank all essential workers. We salute your efforts and thank you for the sacrifices you've made to keep us all safe. During these challenging times we're facing, our top priority is the health and safety of the communities we serve. And while it's true that things are changing rapidly every day, one thing that will never change is our commitment to giving you the best in sound financial solutions to help you during and after the coronavirus pandemic. At Fidelity Bank, our focus will always be you. Fidelity, we're good for you. We all know there's nothing more refreshing than the taste of an ice-cold Coca-Cola straight from the cooler. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Whether we're celebrating a birthday, promotion, or just a great meal, make each moment a Coca-Cola moment. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga Distributors. Make sure you ask for the unforgettable flavor of a classic Coca-Cola. The Honeymoon Over, a CNCF production heard on Radio Cayman Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. and repeated on Saturdays at 6.45 p.m. It's proudly sponsored by Radio Cayman, Ministry of Culture, CUC, Grape Tree Cafe, Cayman Medical Supplies, and Puritan Cleaners. Make sure and tune in. You hear? For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We have in the studio with me, my pleasure to have in the studio with me, Dr. Steve McField. We're continuing the conversation of the issue the, of self-determination, the role of the United Nations. We also shared with you uh, Dr. McField's petition in 1970 to the United Nations um, as well. We, we have a caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, Dr. McField, have you ever done any research in the um, archive to see what the minute to the uh, of the governor to the UK regarding um, the times in which these things were occurring with you, particularly in the courts and so forth? No, um, I I search. I don't think they're they're released yet, because remember now. Th- th- the things that are released as things like in the 1960s, I don't think they have gotten to mm-hmm. 1970 yet to okay. release them. But maybe they may be released by now, though. But but they were not they were not in the archives then. Mm-hmm. But we, okay. we did speak about it earlier. We, we did, and we're we going to be checking we, to see. Mr. Warren, we did speak about it earlier. We will check in to see if the if okay. if the correspondent has been released, um, so that we can get the the the, the full picture of, of of what they said. But when when what? they when they wrote here and what and what came on came on said sent Response. back to them mm-hmm. responded to okay. them. Well, what um, why why is it that the UK isn't living up to its obligation to um, regarding information to us about self governance? Why is it just like hey, you know, you can go independent if you want, but not really having the discussion that it should be. And imparting the information uh, to the public because it's it's not good enough just to talk to the premier about mm-hmm. what happened. Because the truth of the matter is, is that if came, if Cayman decides to take the route going um, independent, then the only way that we're going to succeed 
is if the public understands its role in, in holding the government accountable. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a dictatorship. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I don't understand why there's so little information in relation to the public. Carla, I would proffer, uh, you know, my opinion on that and say basically that th- there's not enough push coming from the people of the Cayman Islands. Yes. We, we don't seem to have that desire, that hunger for information. I have no doubt that the mission that was um, sent to the Cayman Islands, of course, with the permission uh, or the acquiescence of the United Kingdom in 1977, that Dr. Mark Fields letter to the United Nations in 1970 had something to do with that. I have no doubt whatsoever that that is the case. And um, if you continue to listen, you will see um, in terms of their interview with the governor, we're getting through the governor's um, voice or, you know, what he said to them, the the UK's positions, the UK's take on, on this as well. I'll listen. Okay. Thank you very much, caller. Uh, we have another caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Uh, morning, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you and Dr. McField doing? Excellent. Thanks. Yeah. Very good. I just, I was just listening there, doing my shows in the morning, and I, I was not aware. Well, I, I didn't live in this country in 1970, so I was not aware of the letter that, or the petition that Dr. McField had made. But I, I, I want to share this with you that those, I don't know about today, but my eldest daughter in 19, I think in 1989, mm-hmm. she graduated from, she went straight through the Golden schools, primary school, blah, blah, middle school. Blah. She had, and she graduated from sixth form with three A levels, and she had seven O levels. So she qualified to go to a multitude of universities, and she chose one way up in uh, Connecticut. The point I'm trying to make is that I went to the Glass House at the time to apply for a scholarship, knowing full well that she qualified for, for, for it. Mm-hmm. But the person who was in charge at the time wasn't even a, a Caymanian. <laughs> you, know what, you know what they told me? Oh, they say, you can afford it. You, you don't need a scholarship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's still going on. I mean, it's it's it's, it's bad to say, but it, at least it, it had went on up until, up until 1989. Yeah, yeah. And you know, on the other hand, I my parents moved the family to Jamaica long before they became independent, and I was privileged to be able to take the the uh, local uh, examination that qualified me to go to, go to school. So I I went to Kingston Technical High School. For the full four-year course, free of cost, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I the exam. Mm-hmm. And it was during that time then Jamaica became independent, but it didn't matter. I mm-hmm. mean, nobody said it to me, so I just went through. Was that called a senior Cambridge exam then? Was that? No, but, no. What I did was GC. G- GC. Okay. Okay. No, wait, you see, I, when I went to or when we moved to Jamaica as the elder of the three sons, I I didn't qualify to go to primary school, so I had to go to secondary modern. Mm-hmm. And they had a common entrance exam, mm-hmm. which I took, passed, and I went to technical. Uh, Kurt did the same thing, and he went to St. George's College. My bro- the other brother passed half, and he went to Excelsior. But the point I'm trying to make is that we have it all backward here. Yep. All backward. You know? Yes, Mr. Pre- and President Tibbetts, um, do you, are you aware that of all the scholarships that these countries are offering to us? that I talked about before, Qatar, yeah. Saudi Arabia, Singapore, all of these countries are offering scholarships to us. It's but I, but they, 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 they're not advertising a newspaper. And the, and the average student and the average family, the average parent came and don't know about, about, about all these scholarships that these United Nations mm-hmm. um, nations are, are offering to our, our children. Mm-hmm. And but the, admini- the, ad- the administering power should be uh, informing, informing us Informing us about that, yes. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder what's going to happen with my grandson who's <laughs> when he becomes of age. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopeful, yeah. hopefully things will be yeah, better if, we, so. if we, we if we have the right structures and the right people in place. Hopefully yeah, things will yeah. be better. Caller, we're going to ask you to leave us there. We're going to try to grab yeah, another yeah. caller uh, before oh, we go okay. to our break. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. 
Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, you guys got a very good discussion going there this morning. Thank you. Okay, yeah. A lot of information. I think <laughs> I don't know how it, how it could stay covered up so so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's, still, it's still being being being, I guess, uh, covered with coconut leaves or what, uh-huh. or whatever. But uh, you talk about information getting out to the public, and uh, you know, it, and I thought back to. You know, when I think it was Mr. Borden, Truman Borden, Honorable Truman Borden, and George Smith that went to the United Nations, uh, I guess that was back in 77, 78. Yes, he and yes. George Smith. Uh-huh. Yep. George Smith, yes, right? Yes, yes, right, and right. Right in that very same studio there, I interviewed them <clears throat> when they came back. And at that time, I, you know, I sensed a kind of, should I say, subtleness, but that they didn't seem to want to to really push anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was, you know, we're going to be, you know, uh, I don't know how, how they think, but that was the impression that I got. And because we went over everything that they told the United Nations, and I even said to them, I said, well, did you, I can't remember this, this is what, 40 some years ago. I said, there was something that I sort of challenged them on. I said, well, did you tell them about this? Well, no, we didn't, you know, and, uh, but I think, like was mentioned, yeah, the, the public, the community has to have a thirst for this information to, to really erupt, and I, I use that, that word, the, the uh, powers that be, that how this information mm-hmm. to get, get it out, and, you know, the thing with the scholarships that I heard right off there, how many opportunities are being missed mm-hmm. because nobody knows anything about this. But, you know, I, and we just have, have to keep kind of, kind of pushing the curtain or pulling it down or, or, or lifting it up, you know, and... Uh, yeah, we're going to lift the veil. We're going to yes. lift the whole veil of secrecy. Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think the time is over when we, you know, Living with the shades pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, caller, I just would like to share with you what the United Kingdom um, said in a, in this year, last this year. It says, in a communication dated the 14th of February 2020, the permanent mission of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland to the United Nations informed the Secretariat of the following. Education in the British Overseas Territory is a domestic issue. And therefore, under their constitutions, is the responsibility of the locally elected government. It is a matter of domestic policy for the government of each overseas territory to determine what proportions of its national budget is spent on studying and training. Mm-hmm. That puts it right in our right, hands. Right in our, yeah, right, smack right, in our hands. Right, right in our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. to blame yeah. but Nobody yourself. Nobody to blame but yourself. Yeah, and you know, I, I have listening to Dr. Mark there describing some of his uh, things, and when I I came back in 75, and I came in on a little bit of the tail end of this one. I never did, could figure it out for myself. And maybe, I think, and maybe he did, but maybe you should expose some of that stuff at that time. I'm sure if you had came over, took, took, a little, took a few steps over, over from where you're at, we might have got <laughs> Well, I, I probably wouldn't have been here then. The government wouldn't have allowed out on a government uh, radio yes, station uh, then. I wouldn't have gotten a job. Today, yes, but not yeah, then. I, I, I know that, so that's, you know, that, that's good thinking. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and I think back to our cricket playing days when, you know, you were, from those days, you were an agitator, you know. Yes. You, you put that bat down in front of the ball and say, you can't get through, you can't get through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Then, then you come yes. into West Bay and Mr. Ortiz was the, was the, uh, the, the, the wicked, wicked keeper. That's and right. You back, you're not going to see that ball. You're not going to see that ball. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. You yes, got yes. the bat down in front of the ball. Yes, and yes. I saw it. So. Yes. <laughs> Caller, I want to thank you very much for that. We're going to go to a commercial break. We do have a voice note afterwards as well. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Stronger. Wider. Higher. Lighter. 
the all-new Ford Ranger Raptor. Powerfully built with a 2.0 diesel Panther engine and 210 horsepower. Modern with leather interior and 8-inch touchscreen. Sync 3 technology and power features. Tough. Built to handle the off-road with four-wheel drive, terrain modes, and a 10-speed automatic transmission. Coming early October to Vamped Motors, Walkers Road. To find out more and to test drive the bold new Ford Ranger Raptor, visit Vamped Motors, Walkers Road, or call 949-8288. Green Turtle, modern solutions to get you through the new normal. Download the Green Turtle app now and top up yours or a loved one's phone with any mobile carrier in any destination. Home delivery of laptops, tablets, phones, accessories, and iTunes and major online retailer gift cards. And now, home deliveries of groceries and courier service. Guaranteed delivery within two hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Visit their list of products at greenturtle.ky or download the Green Turtle app today. Green Turtle is not only the future of mobile but today it can help save a life take a ride on the green turtle express today download the green turtle app the future of mobile saving lives today it's the Tempur-Pedic and Sealy Summer of Sleep Mattress Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Temper Adapt Hybrid Queen Mattress, now just $19.99. Save $500 on all Temper Breeze mattresses. Save $200 on all Sealy Hybrid mattresses. Check out Brand Source Home Gallery's wide selection of Tempur-Pedic and Sealy mattresses and enjoy savings during the Summer of Sleep Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Visit us at 209 Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Call 623-5000 for more information. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system for information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. Paul, I think we have a caller. We have a voice note. Let's do the caller first. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. For the Record. Uh, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> my voice is kind of bad this morning. This is my <laughs> Um, I the, the conversation is so interesting, I don't like to interrupt it, but I have to go out and I need to throw a little spanner into the work. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. I reported on that mission. I met them at the airport, and I'd like to tell that story one of these days, but I don't want to interrupt Mr. McPhee. But I want to bring us forward a little bit. We just we have constitutional reforms now that mm -hmm. are supposed to be in the making. It started in 2018 with a visit by the Premier and the then leader of the opposition to England. They presented what they thought were reforms to the Constitution we have now. Mm -hmm. And on November the 10th, 2019, Lord Tariq, who was then the Secretary of State, wrote the, the Premier. And I want to read it because I want you to know we didn't just miss out then, we missed out now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have welcomed the fact that, and I'm not going to read it, but I welcome the fact that our bilateral discussion to be have included representatives from both the government and the opposition in the Cayman Islands. As you know, the next step is agreeing this package is to obtain the broadest possible cross-party and public support for these reforms. Generally, the policy of the UK government has been to require a referendum unless the reforms are declared by the Premier and the leader of the opposition to be minor or uncontroversial. However, I would also note that the UK government's position on this matter is reserved. There may be circumstances where a referendum may not be possible or appropriate. Therefore, I would be grateful if you could outline how you intend to seek the broadest possible support for the reforms to the Constitution, both within the Legislative Assembly and the wider public. If the decision was not to hold a referendum, it would be helpful if you could explain the case for not doing so. Um, on the 20th of November, 2019, the Premier and the Leader of the Opposition replied to Lord Mead. We refer in particular to your request to seek the broadest possible support for the reforms both within the Legislative Assembly and the wider public. To that end, we are pleased to advise that following discussions with members of the Legislative Assembly, we have agreed on package of reforms as contained in the draft order. That only to the coming into effect of the provisions in Section 5 relating to the additional minister being deferred to the start of the next term, that is, until after the next election. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we are of the opinion that although the charges 
are not, the changes are not minor. They are nonetheless uncontroversial. In such circumstances and in accordance with your letter, we believe, we believe a referendum is neither necessary nor appropriate. And instead, our agreement to the reforms will eventually be confirmed through a resolution in the Legislative Assembly. This is an approach confirmed as acceptable to the United Kingdom government in a letter dated the 10th of June 2009, during 2012, from the then Parliamentary Undersecretary, Chris Wyatt. In this regard, we undertake to provide you the relevant Hansard transcript of the resolution by the Legislative Assembly at the conclusion of the debate on a package of reforms. However, we consider that the consensus reached by us in confirming our agreement to the reforms is of such significance as to justify no debate. Where was the consultation that the British government started with the people? That was the opportunity for the people of the Cayman Islands to say, this is what we want put into the new constitution. This is what we want put into the draft that you are sending to London. The public was never consulted. And the draft has gone forward now, and they're lamenting that they didn't take Section 81 out. What they should tell people is what the Section 81 that they were putting in said. Mm -hmm. But you see, none of this has come to light. Mm -hmm. Because we do these things in the dark, and we pretend that it came from everybody. It didn't. Mm -hmm. I had my own views, and I stated on your show that one of the things that they needed to look at was the fact that when election petitions were, um, were brought up, they should go not to one grand court judge, but either to a panel of judges mm -hmm, or mm -hmm, have mm -hmm, the right of appeal, mm -hmm, which is denied people who mm -hmm, go forward with election mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, there were so many areas mm -hmm. of the present constitution that needed the public input, and it never got it. They decided among themselves what they wanted. And, and the UK and the UK acquiesced to it. They acquiesced to it as well. They, 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 the UK could have um, done otherwise and, and insist, but they didn't. No, because at that point in time, they went into an election. You know, they did. They passed. They went to the House with this uh, this group of um, reforms that they wanted for the Constitution in a um, night meeting, uh, because mm -hmm. England was going. Um, what uh, yeah. Johnson had called a, an election, right? And um, they had, according to them, had to get it there before. That was election, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think also that the, the, the relationship that the government at that time had with the minister for the overseas territories had a lot to do uh, it, yes, to do with it yes. as well. But caller, uh, we still have another a uh, few callers queued up as well, and I know uh, that you have so much to say, and we yeah, really want want, want to listen to it. And we'd like you to come on one time. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know, uh -huh. that not just we we didn't just miss at any time. We miss all the time. Oh yes, every, every time. Yes, now, yes informed. Yep. It is not communicated to yep. the public what is going on. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, for that. Uh, let's grab another caller before. Uh, this is going to be our last call because I, I need to share with our listening audience the then governor, and I believe it was Mr. Thomas Russell in 1977, and what he had to say about this whole thing that we have in our head about mm -hmm. the Cayman Islands and the stability of the Cayman Islands being as a result of being a British overseas territory. Let's grab the caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome yeah, to For the Record. Good good morning, OC. Good morning, Dr. Safe. Good, good morning. Good morning. 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 <laughs> it's a pleasant morning, and, and we got good topics. Every Friday, I, I look, I don't know, I, I'm actually getting addicted <laughs> to Friday mornings on your station. You know, I want to, you know, <laughs> during the, the, the Ronald Reagan and uh, Jimmy Carter, um, Times of a debate when they were when uh, Jim, Jim, uh, President Carter was running for re-election, and then Jim and then Ronald Reagan had to say, "Here we go again." <laughs> uh, this is this is typical of what this Friday show is all about. Here we go again. The same same issues. Uh, and as as a former Speaker of the House, the Honorable Mayor Lawrence just said, "This is not something new. These are things that have been festering and just left on a shelf for far too long." We we to be to be blunt. We are too much of a passive people when, when it comes to our own well-being. We, we don't speak up. We don't, we don't stand for what we know is right, even though we know in our heart of hearts that, that it is right. We just leave it, leave it, leave it alone 
for some magical day, some magical day 30 years from now, some people say 30 years from now, when all of a sudden we are going to be ready for independence. I, 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 I cannot imagine, you know, in, in Spanish, we have a, 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 the, 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 the Plato, we call it uh, Masia, Masia. But it's Plato, and that's what, that's what, that's what we are being, <laughs> that's, that's what we are in the Cayman Islands. We are a Plato. We, they, we, we are malleable. We can be molded. We can be put into any mm-hmm. shape yeah. that, mm-hmm. that they want us to put us in. And, and we are crazy enough to live with it, to yes. go along with it, and, and, and dance to their music instead of, us, instead of us saying, no, this cannot fly to their bobo. We mm-hmm. have to address this issue. Yep. I, 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 I back to, to what, to what uh, President um, uh, Roosevelt or Truman said, we have nothing to fear but fear ourselves. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, what, what is going on here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, I... And, 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 anyway, I, I, I really, am, am, it's like a broken record. And, and, and the Speaker of the House, uh, Ms. Mary Lawrence, just said just now, it's a, it's a broken record. We, 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 are, we are saying this every time. I, I, I can show you. We miss the board on every news, occasion. No, listen, yes. I, I can show you newspaper clippings that that I have in my art, attic from, night, from the 70s, the issues that people campaigned for then in some elections are the same issues we have today. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, it's incredible. The issues that we, we had years ago during the Benson Ebanks time when I was still a young man living in West Bay, we had a, a group called the West Bay Action Committee. And, and, and we, we used to meet, I mean, some of the, some of the business, the, the elderly business people today were on that committee. And if I show you the, the letters that we wrote in, in those days, and that's in, in, the, in the late 70s, the same issues. Mm-hmm. Caller, I want to thank you. I yeah. want to thank you very much. Uh, uh, Paul, you want to take the break and then the, a voice note? Folks, we're going to take our last commercial break. We have a voice note, and then uh, we're going to share some more with you. Have Dr. Steve McField uh, give some closing comments as well. So please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. We all know there's nothing more refreshing than the taste of an ice-cold Coca-Cola straight from the cooler. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Whether we're celebrating a birthday, promotion, or just a great meal, make each moment a Coca-Cola moment. Available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga Distributors. Make sure you ask for the unforgettable flavor of a classic Coca-Cola. Whether you're finishing a new condo, upgrading your rental property, or simply renovating, make Ropers Enterprises your first stop. Quality furniture at a fraction of the price. Find everything for your home and kitchen at low prices. Ropers, your neighborhood store. Value, integrity. Ropers Enterprises, 122 Industrial Way. Your home deserves a quality finish. Visit their showroom or shop online at ropers.ky. Ropers, providing products and services for better public health. It's the Tempur-Pedic and Sealy Summer of Sleep Mattress Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Temper Adapt Hybrid Queen Mattress, now just $19.99. Save $500 on all Temper Breeze mattresses. Save $200 on all Sealy Hybrid mattresses. Check out Brand Source Home Gallery's wide selection of Tempur-Pedic and Sealy mattresses and enjoy savings during the Summer of Sleep Sale. On now at Brand Source Home Gallery. Visit us at 209 Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Call 623-5000 for more information. Important announcement for Caymanian tourism sector employees. The Ministry of Tourism's Displaced Tourism Employee Stipend Program has reopened for registration from 14th of September through 30th of September. This third registration period is for new registrants only, and all information must be supplied via online portal stipend.ourcayman.ky by the deadline 30th of September. Email stipend at caymanislands.ky with any questions. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning. Welcome back to For the Record. We're going to play a voice note. Uh, Paul? Good morning, gentlemen. Um, just want to commend Dr. Maxfield for accomplishing what I call triumph out of 
tragic situation. I'm just to ask him one question. Is he going to write a book? Okay. Doc, are you going to write a book? I'm not going to write any book. I don't think Caymanian people um, read books much. Um, I go to their houses mostly. And I don't see any bookshelves, mm -hmm. and I don't see books in their in their mm -hmm. in their in their homes mm -hmm. mostly. I but, don't but 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 um, hey, man is, hey, man is not academic. Uh, but Mr. Borden has been pretty successful in his publications. You know, yeah, yeah, yes. I think it mm. depends on what yes. the, uh, uh, yes. what the subject is. I think people would have certainly have an interest mm -hmm. in your journey. Yes. Your long journey, varied journey, um, uh, you know, as well. You know, something that you should consider, dog. Something you should consider. And and some of the people, some of the people are still here. Some mm -hmm. people are still mm -hmm. alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really want to have an animosity between them and my children, my grandchildren. But some of them are still. Well, you can alive. you can write it and tell them to publish it after. Yes, you. <laughs> yes, yes. After you're gone, so we're going to yes, share yes, this yes. Uh, uh, last one with you, po folks. This one is very important. Please, please listen to it. This is again the um, the members of the decolonization committee, who um, special committee, who came to the Cayman Islands. Um, the the they were led by a gentleman by the name of Mr. Vinabubo, right? They met with the governor. I believe the governor at that time was Mr. Russell, and they had some concerns that they asked them about. And I read, shared some of them with you before. This one is important. Paragraph 174 of the document, replying to the question as to the extent to which stability in the minds of the people was dependent on a continuing British presence, the governor said, and I'm going to read that again, replying to the question as to the extent to which stability in the minds of the people was dependent on a continuing British presence, the governor said that the United Kingdom presence and United Kingdom flag somehow or other were thought to contribute. Notice what he says. They were thought mm -hmm. to contribute to, I, I, I'm talking so much I, I, and, and take my eyes off the, the, the thing, uh, thought to contribute to the stability of the th territory. Stability was something very precious to the islanders. They feared stepping into the unknown, Caymanians, they, they feared stepping into the unknown. Caymanians had opted out of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, although they were members of its associated organs. They preferred to send their children to schools in the United Kingdom or the United States, even though they paid their contribution to the University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. Theirs was a genuinely insular attitude, but they felt secure as a crown colony. Yet, as seafaring people, they were very, very well-traveled and therefore well-informed about other parts of the world. They were very proud of their achievements. Nationalism was very strong in the territory. How in the world can they call it nationalism, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, uh, you know when, 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 when you're under the U.K.? But in the minds of the people, in the minds of you, that, that means it's only thought because what the governor didn't present here was any evidence from the UK's standpoint of here is what the UK does that makes them want to, to do this. What he speaks about is the Caymanians' belief. 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 And as a result of that, yeah. they send their children yeah. to schools in the UK okay. rather than Jamaica okay. or, or Bar, Bar Barbados or to the university or Trinidad to the University yes. of the West Indies, yes. or they send them to the United States. States. Huh? Folks, it is all a farce. It's all mental. And until we're able to free ourselves from that mental slavery that we believe that because... We are ruled by the United Kingdom. That is what brings us success. That means you, we have no 
faith, no trust, no confidence in our own abilities. I'm sorry to have to say it, but yes. it is the truth, Doc. Anything you want to add? Well, um, several years ago, I went down to a restaurant on Seven Mile Beach, and I saw the ching chings coming up to the table. Mm-hmm. And when I wouldn't give them the food, they would take it from the plate. <laughs> they would take the the, the chips and, from the plate. Mm-hmm. And I start wondering, how would they, um, if the tourists went, if people wasn't eating in the Seven Mile Beach in those areas, how would they manage back in the wilds? How would they manage back in the wilds again? And then I start to think, perhaps that could that same that that's that that same system could 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 you could relate that to human beings mm-hmm. and then i went back to my first year psychology and i start reading about the basic the basic principles of classic conditioning mm-hmm. remember what pavlov yeah yes where he did it with the, with the dog and the bell and then i said and then it says pavlov says research on classical conditioning profoundly informed Psycho- and then I start reading, going back and reading in Brave New World, Huxley, where he says that conditioning plays a role in the maintenance of social control. So that's what we are. Yep. We're being socially controlled mm-hmm. by, by this by this class of conditioning. And 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 if you and if you look at and if, if you look at how the political parties in some in some in some colonial countries too. Like in Jamaica, when they use the bell, that's a symbol. Mm-hmm. When you read the, when you, and when, when oh, you, man. and when you told the bell, it means that you go out and vote for you and stand for your party. Yeah. You see the same thing. And 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 when you and when you, you apply that to Cayman, the social conditioning of people now getting handouts from the government. They, it takes their insensitive away to go to work, to 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 be on your own. To be your own person, to 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 need your own bread, as my grandmother used to say. You so every time that you the, the month comes, you you realize that, and any you or what is going to give you some mm-hmm, money, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. you don't have an incentive enough to mm-hmm. give your true education and, and to give your and and and, and to and, and 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 to give yourself self esteem, and so that's what has happened to us. Social condition in all of these decades have now put us in a position where we don't have a, any 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 um intention to to for to to go, to actually govern ourselves where, where we where we don't believe that we can even do it do ourselves it. Yeah. and 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 yes. look 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 at this uh, paragraph seven uh, one seventy six re- with regard to future sources of development funds, the governor pointed out that after nineteen eighty when the United Kingdom would cease to grant soft loans to the Cayman Islands, the governor said that the territory had never been on grant aid and he hoped that the country would be able to raise funds from financial institutions such as the Caribbean Development Bank and local banks. He remarked further that there was a limit to the amount of infrastructure development required in small islands and that the per capita uh, Increase, uh, p- sorry, the per capita income was two thousand U.S. dollars per annum. So what he's basically saying here is, you're not getting anything after um, yeah. 1980. Mm-hmm. You will have to seek loans through uh, the local organizations, uh, either local banks or mm-hmm. or car companies. And folks, we have done all of that. So again, those of you who talk about the United Kingdom and the stability and the contingent liability and all of those things. We have paid our way since 1977. We have been paying our own way. Now, I'm going to say this, and probably after this show this morning, I won't be on for the record anymore, but we saw after the Federation of the West Indies, Mr. Ormond Panton, pushing for full internal Mm self-government. What we had, what we saw what happened with him. Now, when you look, when you read Mr. Armand Panton's book, he points out to you what his family background. So he was half black, Mm -hmm. you know, know, in in his family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say it without any regrets and with no intention to withdraw it whatsoever. 
the Cayman Islands, the people of the Cayman Islands will not accept full independence, political independence and a, a constitutional advancement that puts a Caymanian in control until we see someone who has a different skin pigmentation yes, yes. from your uh, yes. other than yours or yes, mine, yes, Dr. Mark Field. Yes, that's right. That's that right. is that's only right. when that yes, the people yes, of the right. Cayman mm -hmm. Islands are gonna accept it mm -hmm. when they have someone looking like those people mm -hmm. in the United in the Kingdom, Kingdom yeah. who govern, yeah, govern us. That's right. It's not gonna happen until then. That's Folks right. you can beat me up for that if you want, yeah, right. but that is my view and I stick to it. Doc Yes. <laughs> um so we're closing now. I would just like to remind um, the listeners that there are hundreds of scholarships given by the um, the nations who are members of the United, Na the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because someone um, wanted to know how, do, how they can apply for well, they, uh, United they, they Nations can, They can apply di directly to them, to the, to the scholarship secretariat. Okay. Um, in Canada, there's, a, there's the University Scholarship Program. Uh, there's the lead, Emerging Leaders in the Americas Program. There's uh, the faculty leadership program. There's the uh, uh, there's the virtual leader. There's the there's the there's the Canada also has something called the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Scholarships. Saudi Arabia has every nation probably has scholarships that Caymanians can 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 um can can access. And I would I would I would ask families to write to the United Nations Scholarship Secretariat and ask, and they will get all of the um, information about the scholarships, and if they want, if they want some of the paperwork from me, they can do that by by sending um, sending um, uh, sending me a, a note to Steve S T E V E at A S M dot K Y, and I will send them the um, the General Assembly uh, member uh, scholarship information that they need to so that their children can can go out in the world and they can go to get a scholarship from these other territories because I, I doubt that they are going to get information locally from anybody here other than um, other than the people who actually uh, award the scholarships. Mm -hmm. And it says offers by members of the states of, of study and training facilities for inhabitants of non-self-governing territories. That's the, um, and it's the report of the general secretary. Okay. Excellent. Doc, again, I want to thank you very much for, for being here. We hope that we can continue this because I still, on, on that report, I need to share yeah. with our audience the, um, when the, the, the members of the committee went to the, each district in the Cayman Islands, the reception that they got in some districts, they got a very cordial uh, reception um, in West Bay, for instance, uh, Miss Esther Ebank, she was one of uh, uh, the chairperson, I believe, there in, in charge of it. People of, um, you know, West Bay were, you know, some of them, most of them, pretty receptive. Bodentown, uh, Mr. Uh, A.J. Miller was the chairman of the meeting that, that took place there, even though all members of the um, executive council uh, attended that meeting as well. Well received there. There were other districts where they were not well received. Uh, they were treated, you know, quite uh, horrifically in terms of the, the, the attitude that people, you know, spoke to them. And now bear in mind also that I believe that most of those, if not all of those members of that committee, they were from third world countries. Yes, you know, yes. Also. They were third world yeah. countries also. So, 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 so they, so they, they, they show them, them no respect. Exactly. They show them no respect. Exactly. So. Yeah. Uh, again, Doc, thank you very much, folks. Yeah. I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, wherever that may be. I also want to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. So I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. Join Sterling, Dwayne Banks at 12.15 for talk today. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands, despite what we say here. <laughs> For the Thank Record you. is brought to you by Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands.
Cayman Pharmacy Group, with a location in West Bay and professional pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. Seaboard Marine, with over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling 949-4977 or visit seaboardmarine.com for competitive rates. FIS MoneyGram, the safest and most convenient way to send money worldwide. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. Coca-Cola, available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga distributors. Accept no substitutes. Taste the feeling with Coca-Cola. Brand Source Home Gallery, inspiring luxury. And Fidelity Bank. Fidelity, we're good for you. For the record, also brought to you by Ropers Enterprises. 122 Industrial Way, products and services for better public health.